Well, good Wednesday morning. We are waking up to very pleasant temperatures anyway. Skies are mostly clear 62 degrees right now with plenty of 50s out in the suburbs. We're going to warm up to around 80 at noon and a high this afternoon of 85 degrees. Let's take a look at your traffic from our MDOT camera right at M59 and Opdyke. You can see very light traffic volumes as we continue the morning right now and no accidents to report. Well, we're just now seeing some shocking dash cam video from the Tennessee wildfire back in November. Video from the Silverville uh, Police Department shows just how close officers came to the blaze, even driving through flames as they made their rounds. The wildfire in Gatlinburg forced 14,000 people to escape the flames near the Great Smoky Mountains. In total, 14 people died in that fire, 2,500 homes and buildings were completely destroyed. Wow, that really puts it all into perspective. New in our next half hour stories coming out of Westland, Shelby Township and Ann Arbor. And Kim DiGiulio live this morning on the Michigan court case is getting a lot of national attention, Kim. That is right. It was just last month when an airport officer was stabbed at Flint's Bishop International Airport. We have an update, update on his status and some more information coming out right up. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 5.30 starts now. Facing a judge, the man accused of stabbing a police officer at Flint's Bishop International Airport is headed to court. Plus, at an impact, a jilted lover uses his car as a fiery weapon, ramming it right into his ex-girlfriend's apartment. And if you like the 4th of July forecast, you'll love today. Brandon says expect a wonderful warm-up for this Wednesday. I like the sound of that. Welcome to Wednesday, everybody. Thank you for waking up with us. It's 5.30 on July. I was like, wait, what day is it? <laughs> it is July 5th. I'm Ev Rod Casimir. And I'm Jason Carr for Rhonda Walker, and Brandon is in for himself. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's a in-body, out-of-body experience here this morning. Hope you're waking up well on this July 5th. Did you do a little partying yesterday? Do a little fireworks? Well, we have dry conditions once again, which means another warm one today. If you are one of those extending your holiday weekend, expanding it, it's going to be a great one for the beach, for the pool, for the boat. 62 degrees right now, and we're up to about 67 by 8 a.m. Sunrise is just after 6, so we're about a half an hour away, although we can see it starting to come up. 81 degrees at noontime and 85 with a mix of mainly sunshine and a few clouds through the afternoon. Tigers and Giants play again tonight at Comerica 7 o'clock. Temperatures will be in the 80s for tailgating and falling into the upper 70s during the game. Very, very comfortable stuff. You can see here not a lot of problems from satellite and radar and it will stay that way for well, another couple of days. But we'll talk about some shower and storm chances as we head toward the weekend coming up. Jason right now has your morning drive. All right, eastbound and westbound 8 mile Woodward to 75, one lane blocked uh, 7 a.m. until next Wednesday. Also, eastbound 8 mile Van Dyke to Hoover, two lanes blocked daily, 9 to 3 p.m. until late July. It is 531, everyone, and the eyes of our entire country will be on a Michigan courtroom today as a terror suspect goes before a judge. Amor Fatui is charged in the attack on Lieutenant Jeff Neville at Flint's airport. The two may come face to face again today in court. Kim DeGiulio is live with more on this story. Kim. Good morning, guys. That's right. It was just last month when Amor Faturi was accused of going into Flint's Bishop International Airport and stabbing that airport officer. Well, today Amor Faturi is due back in court, but as for that airport officer, he's recovering and even made a special appearance yesterday. It was June 21st when airport officer Lieutenant Jeff Neville was stabbed with a 12 inch knife while on the job. He was released from the hospital days later. Yesterday was a breakthrough day for Neville as he appeared in Fenton's 4th of July parade. Lieutenant Neville rode along a float for the group Concern Over Police Safety. Many onlookers cheered and clapped as he went by, happy he's okay. Lieutenant Neville says he's more than lucky to be doing well. People say you're lucky. I said, no, I'm blessed. It's a lot more than luck when things come together the way they did that day. Lieutenant Neville is healing well and hopes to be back to work soon. 
Certainly good to hear that he is doing well. And as for Amor Fatui, he's again due back in court today and he could end up serving at least 20 years in prison. Reporting live, I am Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. Back to you. Thank you, Kim. Police in Ann Arbor are on high alert after a recent string of break-ins there. The incidents all took place between July 2nd and July 3rd near the University of Michigan Central Campus. Police say four off-campus apartments were broken into. In the first invasion, a man entered an occupied apartment and stole cash. He left when confronted by the resident. Police believe the man made entry through unlocked doors. A man accused of driving drunk and killing a 19 year old has been arraigned. Matthew Stoy was charged Tuesday uh, with driving while intoxicated and given a $50,000 cash bond. This is not his first drunk driving incident, though. We should let you know he has a previous condition conviction out of New York. And now to Canton, where police in Canton Township are investigating a motorcycle crash that sent two people to the hospital. It happened in the area of Central Park in Manhattan Circle. The motorcycle crashed into a front yard of the home. The driver and the passenger were taken to St. Joseph's Hospital in Ypsilanti. The driver is in stable condition. The passenger is in critical condition. And we're being told that speed and alcohol do appear to be factors in this crash. We have an update on the fireworks fire in Shelby Township. This was the scene near the Packard Proving Grounds. No damage there. The fire was in what authorities called a designated hot zone, which is an area where firework debris was expected to fall. Firefighters were prepared. And this morning we are expecting to learn more about an incident in Dearborn, possibly involving a Michigan State Police cruiser. Here is video of the cruiser in the back of a tow truck near the intersection of Wyoming and Mercier. It's unclear what caused the damage to the vehicle. We'll stay on top of it and bring you any new information once that becomes available. Local 4 continues to follow a missing person case in St. Clair County where a two year old boy might be in danger. Jaden Harris is his name and he was last seen Monday with his parents who you see here, Scott and Crystal Harris. The parents took off with Jaden because Child Protective Services has a court order to remove him from the family's home. They're believed to be driving a white Chevy Monte Carlo like this one with a Michigan license plate that reads ADA 585. If you know anything, please call police. Happening today, a motion hearing is set to be held regarding a request for a judge to extend a stay decision that halted the deportation of Iraqi nationals across the country. A judge ordered a two week stay last week. The ACLU, American Civil Liberties Union, has argued the men would face imminent danger if they are sent to Iraq. The ruling protects more than 1,400 Iraqis nationwide who are scheduled for deportation. This morning's hearing is set to get underway at 1130. As the new school year continues to approach, new information reveals public school districts could be penalized for using state funding to, in fact, sue the state of Michigan. The new rule is part of a 2018 education budget bill, which was approved last month. This all comes after the Detroit, Kalamazoo and Saginaw districts sued the state earlier this year. Governor Snyder has yet to sign this bill. It's a dad versus his teenage daughter over texting, and the result goes viral. We'll show you how coming up, but first, a jaw-dropping discovery. A coffin in the middle of the street, and yes, before you ask, there was something or someone inside. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, and now to a terrifying story out of Pennsylvania. That's where a child-sized coffin containing organs was found lying in the street. Police say that they opened the coffin, and that's when they found the organs of either a small child or even an infant. The organs were sent to the medical examiner, who did in fact confirm that they were human organs. Police are now working to determine if the small white coffin was built for a toddler and if it was ever even buried. So far, it has not been connected to any cemetery. A new lawsuit is calling for the recent results of Georgia's most expensive house race ever to be thrown out due to problems with the voting system. The lawsuit was filed by a government watchdog group and six Georgia voters and seeks to overturn the results of the June 20th election between Karen Handel and John Ossoff. In the suit, voters are requesting a new election and better voting systems throughout the district. Handel was declared the winner of the election with 52% of the vote.
The historic Harvard's Fox Club has reverted back to being an all male group after announcing plans to admit female members. In October of 2015, the club accepted junior and senior women as provisional members as part of a new plan to go fully co-ed. However, the new the now the board has revoked the membership of all provisional students, male and female, and is only inviting male students to apply. Now the organization has been around for nearly 120 years. Three people were injured when a home exploded in Missouri on Tuesday. This was the scene in St. Joseph Tuesday morning. As you can see, the home is a complete loss following that blast. Police say three people were oh. pulled from the home by neighbors who came to the rescue. Two men and a woman were taken to the hospital for non life threatening injuries. The cause of that explosion is under investigation. Well, when you plan to get rid of the bees that have uh, moved to uh, other devices, it's time to question the decision making. A man in Grand Blanc Township burned his garage down Monday after he lit a smoke bomb to force out wasps. Oh boy. Take a look at the video. Part of the problem, the insects weren't the only things inside the garage. There were also fireworks in the garage that went off as it went up in flames. We can't make this up. It was actually a neighbor who noticed the garage catching fire and called 911, but uh, by the time they got there, the garage was fully engulfed in flames, spewing smoke that could be seen four miles. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but the fire did cause some minor damage to the home as well. The garage, as you can imagine, that's a total loss. But in fairness, uh, the man says that he did it to get the wasps <laughs> out. Oh, man, oh, man. It would have been easier to just call, like, the waspinator. You know what I mean? <laughs> Orkin man's not going to burn your garage down. There you go. No, and firefighters... Although they live for the action, I know, and there are heroes, they must really dislike the 4th of July just for the potential of anything that could be going on. And I think we got pretty lucky around here. At least uh, we were very good uh, with our fireworks, right? Conditions very dry, and we didn't hear of a lot of problems. Firework related to a bug bombing. An unusual case stands out. 62 degrees in our metro zone at Metro Airport. Double nickels 55 in Howell in our west zone. 52 in Lapeer and Monroe at 56 degrees. Here's a beautiful looking Wednesday warming a little bit. We hit 82 yesterday. Will be 67 degrees by 8 a.m. Another day with dry air. Mostly sunny at noon 81. Apply and reapply that SPF 30 sunscreen. If you're going to be out and about on the boats at the pool today, it's going to be a great day. 85 the afternoon high. We get a couple of fair weather clouds coming with the warm up today. But again, humidity levels are down. Wave activity shouldn't be too bad up on Lake Huron. Your local lakes as well should be very nice. East winds just 5 to 10. Water temperature a little bit of an issue still in Lake Huron, but all right. Waves are less than a foot on Lake St. Clair. Our our local lakes should be very little, little chop. But one area we're watching, Lake Erie. If you plan on going out boating today, one to two foot chop there. Water temperature is the warmest, but these east winds will be driving over Lake Erie and it just sets up for greater wave activity as you get closer into southeastern lower over into Estrel Beach, Luna Pier uh, areas uh, across southern Ontario as well. Leamington, if you're heading out on the boat today, just watch out. Could be a little bit choppy and the sky conditions are going to be wonderful, so a little deceiving and that's just the one little area we want to watch today. Uh, other than that, not a whole lot going on. We're going to increase the humidity just a touch tomorrow, and then we'll be tracking some showers on your Friday. But we're good to go today through the afternoon as we head into your Thursday. Again, high pressure scoots out. Low pressure uh, starts to move in. I think the only chances for rain and thunder in the area tomorrow will be in the Saginaw Valley through the afternoon and evening. Maybe parts of our north zone, but western and northern lower could be seeing some stronger storms coming, especially late in the day on Thursday. You can see here at 1030 PM waiting for those showers to come in here and through here, likely on early Friday. This is a cold front, so that'll bring some scattered activity throughout the day as well, but not a lot of moisture with this one, so no all day soaker, but 
87 tomorrow, feeling a little bit warmer than that. And then again into Friday morning is when that cold front approaches and brings those scattered showers. That cold front brings very comfortable conditions for the weekend ahead, which should be mostly dry. Evrod. Well, that is some good news, Brandon. Not so good news on the road as we are picking up our first accident of the morning. It's on I 75 on the south on side just near clay and it's got the left lane blocked because of that. So we'll uh, keep you updated once that clears and then there's this car on fire on Warren Avenue just west of the south of freeway on uh, M 39. Uh, hopefully fire crews are going to be on the scene there to put that fire out quickly and hopefully no one was hurt uh, in either accident. We'll let you know when they clear. Alrighty, it's time to get into some stories that you might have missed and we're talking about this yet again. Shortly after Kentucky Fried Chicken sent a sandwich into the stratosphere, that flight turned foul. Lord, see what I did there? Yeah, or the writer. <laughs> <laughs> the sandwich is back on the ground this morning after the trip had to be called off. The sandwich floated through the stratosphere for 17 hours of what was supposed to be a four day trip. They discovered a leak in the balloon holding the zinger at the height it was flying. It's possible it became reheated <laughs> as it was exposed to atmospheric radiation. OK, nuked in other words. Interesting. And now I wonder what they're going to do with the sandwich. Did somebody get to eat it? Is it still good? Well, they said it was it was cooked a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let them judge that and taste it for themselves and report exactly. back to us. Uh, police in North Carolina now sure know how to have some fun. Check this out. Instead of shutting down a block party, the officers there joined in on the fun. They even slipped into a garbage bag and a raft to make a ride <laughs> uh, or take a ride on the homemade slip and slide, as you can see. Well, good for them, protecting, serving, and having a little bit of fun uh, as well, which I think is very important. Our Detroit police officers do uh, some fun things when they see people out in the community as well. So we, we salute you and we appreciate all the work that our officers do. I want to know how you construct the homemade slip and slide. That looked like a lot of fun. It, it certainly did. It looked like a whole bunch of hefty bags put together and like all down a hill. I loved it. Uh, so most of us don't like the idea of being away from our phones too long. Where's yours? Yours is right there. Mine is. Where is mine? Mine's somewhere around here. It's behind you. But there we go. OK, so this also goes for teens who have a lot of gossiping and Snapchatting to do, right? They don't like to be away from their phones either. I think you got a text. I think I did just get a message. One dad decided to impose a phone timeout on his daughter, and the way he delivered this is going viral. <laughs> the dad designed this handwritten note to look like a series of text messages on a phone screen. It starts with, hi, daughter, hope you are behaving yourself. I love you followed by a heart and another message which says, why are you not answering me? <laughs> he then wrote, oh wait, followed by a laughing emoji. There's no word as to how long the daughter's phone timeout will last. That is too funny, too funny. But yeah, we can't be separated from our phones. And in case you're wondering, it was came to Julio who texted me, but can't tell you what she said. What you say? No, 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 you can't see. All right, it's private. It's often said imitation <laughs> is the sincerest form of flattery, but not in this case. Yeah, after the break, the sand sculpture making national news. And we want you to take a good, a good look at it to see if it resembles anyone that you know. When we come right back, keep it here. It's one of the most popular new fashion trends. So how can you rock this new look? Plus, big changes coming to a restaurant near you. Today at 10 a.m. on Local 4. To mud at 10. Happy hump day, everybody. It is a pleasant start. Mostly clear skies. The airport's reporting a couple of clouds out there. 62 degrees at the airport in Romulus, but plenty of 50s out in the suburbs. Not cold, just letting you know it is comfortable. Windows open, at least for the first half of the day, and then we start to warm things up. 69 degrees at 9 a.m. noontime, 81 and middle 80s for high temperatures this afternoon. This evening, Tigers and Giants game two. Daniel Norris on the hill against some guy I've never heard of for the Giants, but equal records should be a pretty good game tonight and conditions are going to be beautiful for July baseball in the D tailgating in the low 80s falling into the upper 70s throughout the game and very nice. Just uh, your Tigers T shirt or Jersey will do just fine. Mostly clear skies over the area today. We will track some shower and storm chances in the seven day when we see you back here at 6 a.m. just a few minutes away. But right now, Jason and traffic. We have southbound 75 at Clay. I'm Doc Camera showing an accident there. Nothing else to report at this time. 
It is 554 everybody and police in Florida now say that a man drove his car into his ex girlfriend's apartment, killing himself and setting that apartment building on fire. Car and Charlie carried her out. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, those that? were no fireworks. Investigators removed several charred propane tanks from that burned car. They believe the 31 year old man got into an argument with the woman and intentionally crashed into that building. Fortunately, the families living in that building were able to get out, but they can't go back into their homes just yet. My wife, like she said, you know, she grabbed the, our baby girl and went to the bedroom. And, you know, both of the kids were running to the back and I saw that and I was like, oh, heck no. I like the car's impact with the building is on bursting on flames. So I told them, well, they know it's on fire. We got to get out of here. And that they did. Thankfully, the American Red Cross is helping those residents who were displaced from their homes. In New Jersey, some residents spent the holiday on the beach. That's where this sand sculpture was constructed, mocking Governor Chris Christie sitting on the beach with his family over the weekend. A government shutdown closed New Jersey state beaches and parks for much of the weekend. However, a new budget agreement was made late Monday, which allowed residents to enjoy the fourth on the beach. No response yet from the governor on that sand creation there. Did that, did that really look like him? <laughs> no. Not really. No, not. A, I mean, like that could have, what the Chris Farley was that, you know, <laughs> well, it's a big us. guy in a little shirt and we call it Chris Christie. But I guess since he was on the beach, yep. you know, there you have it. okay. Well, 100 people from 45 countries became U.S. citizens in Virginia on Tuesday. The new citizens took their oaths of independence a day outside the home of their new country's first president. Take a listen. Candidates for naturalization, please raise your right hand. The 4th uh, of July ceremony was held on the lawn outside Washington's home, Mount Vernon. The new citizens are from around the globe, including Canada, Iran, Nepal. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services says the Mount Vernon ceremony was one of more than 65 held throughout the country, either on or close to Independence Day. In all, about 15,000 people were expected to be sworn in as citizens. Well, good for that. All right, coming up all new at 6 o'clock, everybody, local stories from Brownstown Township, Highland Park, and Detroit. Plus, a major automaker saying goodbye to gas and hello, electricity. It's a plan to go electric, all electric in the next two years. And caught on camera, a family's trip to Florida takes a dramatic turn when they were attacked by not crocodiles or alligators, but monkeys. We're back with that and more in just one minute. Keep it here. It's live from downtown Detroit, local four news today at six starts now. A 4th of July celebration turns deadly. A man shot and killed just moments after the fireworks started. Plus, President Trump heads to Europe in what could be his biggest test yet with foreign relations. The commander in chief said to meet with his Russian counterpart. All the while, a potential crisis in North Korea looms. And a good Wednesday morning, the 5th of July, as we get over the hump on your hump day, warming, wonderful Wednesday. All right, welcome to Wednesday, everybody. It's the day after the 4th of July, and if you're up this early, chances are you couldn't sleep last night. Tell us about it. Go to our Local 4 Facebook page and uh, post your comments. We might read some before the end of the program. Complaining about all the kids in the neighborhood shooting off the fireworks all night. Hopefully this only lasts like till Friday. You know what I mean? Get off my lawn! Right. <laughs> Let's turn things over to meteorologist Brandon Rue, one of those old men who <laughs> was probably kept up as well. I was, no doubt. It was like clockwork. Right at about 8, 8.30 last night. It wasn't even dark yet. And <laughs> craziness but you expect it and you are allowed to do it and are you allowed to do it all week does it go on all week i don't make the rules not up to me 61 degrees happy wednesday everybody hope you're doing well after uh, a good fourth of july we can even call it great fourth of july we're going to be back at it again today even a little bit warmer 81 by noon 85 the afternoon high temperatures still have low humidity but with the warmth of the afternoon a couple of fair weather clouds forming no big problems at all from that we could use the rain but we're holding it off at least another day or two comfortable conditions for the Tigers game tonight, uh, tailgating in the low 80s, dropping into the upper 70s throughout the day uh, or throughout the game. Throughout your day, our Kim Haircast 
Where's Kim? It's a good one. We have dry conditions, low humidity and light breezes today. Four zone weather is available for you on your weather tab of clickondetroit.com. Right now, Evrod, as again mentioned, Kim is out live, so we are keeping an eye on the roads in house. Yes, we are. We are following an accident on I-75 near Clay. It uh, should be clearing pretty soon. The vehicle is on the tow truck, so that should not be blocking the left lane for too much longer. Uh, we've also just gotten word that Ford Road is closed at Carlson in Westland because of an accident there. So our second accident of the morning will let you know when both of these have officially cleared. Right now we want to get to breaking news out of New York. That's where police officer has now died after being shot in the face while sitting inside of a police car. This shooting just happened after midnight when the gunman approached and started shooting. Other officers did exchange fire gunfire with the suspect. They killed him. The 12 year veteran was rushed to the hospital and into surgery where she later died. Unfortunately, the department is calling this an unprovoked attack. Breaking news on Detroit's east side. That's where a downed transformer is said to be responsible for sparking multiple fires. This is new video from the scene on Spencer Avenue near East Outer Drive in Van Dyke. DTE crews are currently on the scene and according to the DTE outage map, around 30 customers are without power. We'll stay on top of this developing story throughout the morning. And now to a developing story from overnight in Highland Park, where a man in his 30s is now dead after a shooting at a 4th of July block party. The incident happened near the intersection of Midland and 3rd, just west of Woodward. Investigators say the gunman approached and shot the victim moments after the fireworks started. The gunman remains on the loose, and police are asking for any witnesses who may have information on his whereabouts to contact them. On Detroit's west side, a man stumbles into the street and is hit and killed by a car. The accident happened on Schaefer, north of Wyoming. Investigators say the 37-year-old man was trying to cross Schaefer when he stumbled and was hit by a 27-year-old woman. The woman remained at the scene until police arrived. The man was taken to the hospital and was pronounced dead. Police in Brownstown are investigating now after several rolls of plastic caught on fire. This happened at a home on Fort Street and Woodruff just after 2 a.m. We're told that there's no damage, no one was hurt, but it's believed a small grass fire is what might have caused the plastic to catch fire. It is 603 and they were fed up and now they got their wish. Those living on Detroit's riverfront have been complaining for weeks about large late night parties right outside their homes. Kim DeGiulio is live on the riverfront and Kim, there's a noticeable police presence there now. That is right. Police are going to be cracking down and the main thing that they are cracking down on is parking. Now, believe it or not, a lot of people see this sign above me here, which clearly says no parking and think, hey, why not park here? Well, that is no longer the case because if you do park in a place where it says no parking, you will be ticketed or you will be towed. It's a sound and a sight no driver wants to see. Detroit police are towing vehicles and giving out tickets, but well before they started this process. If I had a prime parking spot, I'd hook you up, but I don't. Well, no, is it okay to park here? No, signs are posted all the way down. Sergeant Tom Griswack and his unit. Can we park right there? No, ma'am. We're going to be towing out of here soon. Okay. Thank you. We're out making sure those coming to Shane Park and the riverfront understood. I saw the sign just today or whatever, and people yeah. were still parking. The days of parking where you want and doing what you feel are in the past. A lot of the citizens of Detroit and a lot of the people from the suburbs feel that they're being picked on. However, we're only enforcing things that are quality of life issues. Sergeant Griswack is leading up task force to clear the river walk, not only of traffic jams, but river rift rafts. Enjoy yourself, but be respectful to others. Four weeks ago, the extra patrols popped up. Is it working? No, not, not really. The people living near the river complained of constant overnight noise. And it's not necessarily enforcement because of the residents that live here. It's the greater of Detroit. Griswack admits for years, the lack of manpower kept officers from enforcing basic rules. He believes 99% of the people are cooperating, but. The 1% believe that this is theirs to do with as they please. And that's not going to be the case, period. 
Time to start following the rules. Now, please don't want to discourage people from coming down here to the riverfront. There is lots to do, concerts. It's just a great place to be, but you have to follow the rules. You can't park where it says no parking. Again, there is plenty of parking garages where you can pay a small fee and park here legally. So make sure you do that if you do plan on heading down to the riverfront. It is, again, a great place to be this summertime. Reporting live here along the riverfront, I am Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. Yeah, there's, you. A, there's a lot of stuff going on down there. Hopefully people will adhere to those no parking signs. Kim, thank you. President Trump oversees this morning, and there's one looming question about his uh, role one on one with Russia's President Friday. Will he or won't he bring up Russia's role in the presidential election? Poland preparing for the arrival of President Trump. He'll join a conference of Central European and Baltic nations and give a major speech in Warsaw to reassure NATO allies that America won't abandon them. A lot of our Eastern European allies are very concerned about Russia's aggression in the last few years. That could come up at a much anticipated meeting with Russia's president at the G20 on Friday, their first. The White House says there's no official agenda. The fact that you're going into this saying that you have no agenda, I think speaks volumes to the preparedness of this president. The administration isn't giving any clues whether the president will confront Vladimir Putin about interfering in the U.S. presidential election. It will be to his detriment if it doesn't, because it will be literally the, the thing that everyone will talk about if they don't address it. If he doesn't bring up interference in the 216 election, he's going to be he's going to uh, convey to Putin that he's weak. The G20 also sure to discuss responding to North Korea's latest missile launch. We're very close, uh, much closer than we've been in, in, in previous administrations to a real military collision with North Korea. President Trump's hoping to put pressure on North Korea's ally, China, to intervene. Of the 11 missile tests North Korea has conducted this year, Tuesday's was their most successful. The missile has a range of 3,500 miles and could reach Alaska. The United Nations Security Council is set to hold an emergency meeting on North Korea today. Meanwhile, Vice President Mike Pence was in Michigan Tuesday celebrating the holiday. The VP and his wife Karen walked in the Grantville Independence Day Parade over in western Michigan. The couple spent nearly two hours walking the route along with Governor Rick Snyder. It is 6.08 now and we're talking going deeper into debt and why most Americans are finding themselves owning a lot more, owing a lot more for cars. That's right, but first a traffic stop in Florida leads to an unusual discovery, not one but three deer inside the car. The reaction is priceless, the, the charges the driver is now facing when we return. Detroit. All right, welcome back, everybody. Here's a look at what's happening today. Sentencing is expected for the Detroit man charged in the crash that killed an 83-year-old woman. That was 19-year-old Deontay Daryl Renfro, and he was involved in that crash that happened back on July 3rd of last year. Renfro was speeding, speeding on East Outer Drive when he hit another car that was stopped there at the red light. Also today, the Detroit Federation of Teachers expected to hold a vote no rally at noon outside the district's headquarters inside the Fisher Building on West Grand Boulevard. The rally is in defense of what teachers call a dangerous agreement and contract for public education. We are back in 60 seconds. Sleep bed. Two South Florida men are in police custody after three endangered deer are found tied up in their car. Florida police found the deer during a traffic stop when two men were pulled over for a broken taillight. Two doe were found in the back seat and one was tied up in the trunk. Passenger told police he had no idea how they got in there. Hmm. Despite his claim, both he and the driver were arrested Sunday and they both face felony charges for animal abuse. And then also in Florida, a family was attacked, attacked by a group of wild monkeys, and it was all captured on video. Watch this. This happened during their visit to the Silver Springs State Park in Ocala last week. The video was posted on YouTube, and there you have it. It shows the monkeys just monkeying around. But then they got angry. They started growling, hissing, and then eventually jumped over and chased the family. And there they go. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. They, uh, I'm... Throw any Bananas? No. You know, oh, oh, monkeys oh. fling. <laughs> yes, you said it. I, I don't know, and I hope they didn't stick around long enough to find out. I'm more shocked that there are monkeys in Florida. Weren't we talking about that? What about snakes and gators, right? Right. Those are 
germane to Florida and, and typical there, but monkeys, hmm. Hmm. interesting. Learn something new every day, right? Yeah, I can't. <laughs> I traveled uh, to Asia with my uh, parents when mm -hmm. I was like 20, and all over Thailand and all these places, they ha they have caged monkeys like at the hotels. And one day my dad went out there and he took a close look. He went right up to the, you know, where the bars were and this monkey just grabbed his glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, hey, you monkey, give me back my glasses. And like the monkey's gonna be like, oh, sorry, here you go, Mr. Roo. Did he ever get them back? Uh, he did and they were, you know, mangled and uh, a little blurry for a while. <laughs> Oh, so he's still embarrassed by that. But uh, anyway, here is our local four storm pin. Nice shot. Love this name too, Kirsten Swackhammer. I don't know if I got that right, but over in the Brighton area, beautiful sunset. You can see uh, the clouds always produce those beautiful colors in the morning and at night. Great shot here from Kirsten over in Brighton. Thanks so much for using our local four storm pins. Another beauty here over in Macomb County looking alive in Mount Clemens. 61 degrees outside right now. A lot of 50s in your neighborhoods, which isn't cold. It's just comfortable stuff. 67 by 8 a.m. Noontime, we're at 81. 85, your afternoon high. Warm and pleasant which means the humidity is not up today. These east winds, uh, five to 10 miles an hour, and those east winds are gonna be traveling over Lake Erie for a longer stretch or fetch, which means the wave problems over Lake Erie could be a little bit more. So if you're in Leamington, if you're in Luna Pier, Estrel Beach, and you're doing any Lake Erie boating today, just watch out for a little bit more chop. Everybody else, doing really well. Water temperatures are coming up and waves shouldn't be a big problem for most. But there you see the high pressure and the air flowing around it clockwise coming right over Lake Erie, keeping the humidity down for us and high pressure keeping the storms away. The UP could see some Severe storms today approaching the Marquette area. Also severe weather likely down in the Tennessee Valley, but we will be high and dry today and tomorrow. Late Thursday, early Friday, we're going to track a couple of showers and storms, but the next couple of systems, early Friday and then late Sunday, early Monday, these systems don't have a ton of moisture with them, so not looking at the soakers that we need. Tomorrow is 87 and a little more muggy, so feeling warmer than that. Scattered showers on Friday starting in the morning, and that cold front coming through on Friday will set up a beautiful weekend. More comfy air coming in Saturday and Sunday, mainly in the 70s. Our 1-800 Hanson's weather window. This is our Bernie Zettner live down at Millican State Park down along the Detroit River. A great looking shot here at the boats that will be a plenty out on the Detroit River, out on Lake St. Clair, and maybe again onto Lake Erie. Be careful. Uh, thanks, Bernie, for a great looking weather window shot this morning. Jason? Let's take a look at what's going on in traffic. We have an accident map to show you. Ford Road closed in Westland, Carlson to Wayne. As an alternate route, you should use Warren or Cherry Hill. By the way, the uh, accident that we told you about uh, previously at 75 and Clay has been cleared. All righty, Jason, thank you to 617. Now let's get into today's consumer headlines. Free food at Chick-fil-A, so there's good news there. There's just a little bit of a catch, but you can definitely still get your free food. Plus, automaker Volvo is going completely green. But first, we're talking car debt that's building up for most Americans. Uh, let's go now live to NASDAQ, where Aaron Aid is joining us with that and more. Good morning. Good morning, Everod. Americans are going deeper into debt to buy cars. The average auto loan in June was $31,000 with a monthly payment of $517. That's the highest so far this year. This according to Edmunds.com. And the loans are stretching out longer, 69.3 months. That's the longest that Edmunds has found since it started tracking the data back in 2002. Volvo is phasing out gas-powered engines. The automaker says every car it makes from 2019 on will have an electric motor. The move makes Volvo the first traditional car maker to fully embrace electric and hybrid production. The company's president said it marks the end of cars powered solely by combustion engines. 
Chick-fil-A holds its annual Cow Appreciation Day next Tuesday. Customers wearing anything cow-like can receive some free entrees. And kids dressed like a cow stopping by a Chick-fil-A will receive a free kids meal. The offer is good from open until 7 p.m. local time. And again, that's next Tuesday, July 11th. So get moving. Yeah, had to throw that in there. Efron, back to you. <laughs> I feel like she has been waiting for that moment. Aaron, you've been waiting for that moment all morning long. Nailed it. <laughs> all right, thank yes. you. Time now at 619. Let's head on over to Jason. You've got a guest in studio with us this morning. I promise everybody come close to the TV and get a good look at this mug. Yes. It's time to meet our pet of the week. This is Bandit. Uh, Patrice Reed is here. Uh, if you recognize this dog from uh, its unique markings, Ooh, you will know it's a Chinese crested, all, right. all also known as a partially hairless dog. That's why. Oh, the, he's the he's really hairless. He's very hairless. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a little sweater on him, keep him warm. <laughs> but he is hairless. <laughs> And he loves getting his hair done. See how he, he <laughs> loves this. He says, oh, that's just, that's just he so nice. He loves getting his nice. hair done? He's got he his hair done. He likes that. Okay. He likes having his hair pulled up. Okay, so uh, there is actually a rescue outfit, Canine Naked Rescue. Um, the phone number is 734-848-6043. Oh, uh, and Bandit is up for adoption. Yeah. Yes, he is. He's a four-year-old. And he's very sweet. He's very cuddly likes to cuddle with you, and you see he loves treats. And it doesn't even have to be a bacon treat. No, but, mm -mm. but it should be, because everybody <laughs> loves bacon. Everybody <laughs> loves Bandit. Patrice, thanks for being here. <laughs> Everett, let's go over to you. That was a very cute dog. Patrice, that dog looks like it could get a weave. You know, from She's Happy Hair? She says no, no, maybe just a couple bundles. Who knows? It is 620, everybody, but it's a very cute dog, and hopefully somebody will adopt it. Up next, they're not just for kids. Believe it or not, there's hidden benefits behind fidget spinners for all ages. We've got details on that coming up. Plus, another world record. How many hot dogs did this world champ down? The answer is coming up next. But before we go to break, let's meet today's Facebook friend of the day. This is Adam. He is from Shelby Township, Adam Atala, And he tells us that he loves his dog, Ollie who's pictured there. Good morning, Adam. We're going to send you a gift card from Termina's Pizza just for being our friend of the day. And if you too would like to win big, make sure you like the Local 4 Facebook page and click on the Friend of the Day tab. We're back in a minute. Take a look at your forecast for today. 61 outside right now. That's Metro Airport. Means we have a lot of 50s out in the suburbs and grab the shades as you head out. It's going to be very pleasant all day long. 80-ish at noon and a high of 85. Tons of sun mixed with a few afternoon clouds. Evrod? Uh, we've got an accident that we're tracking for you if you live in Westland. It's on Ford Road. It's actually closed. Ford Road is from Carlson Street to Wayne Road. Because of this accident, you can use Warren or Cherry Hill to get around it. Brandon? All right, let's get a recap of sports. Never a, a ton going on this time of year, but the Tigers looking to make it two in a row against the San Francisco Giants tonight after opening the series with a win at Comerica Park on Tuesday. Michael Fulmer was very good. He went eight innings with our bullpen. You kind of have to, but uh, he only allowed three hits, struck out five. The offense did the rest. Uh, Fulmer did give up a couple of home runs, but again, only three runs total. And here is Upton into the corner with bases loaded when the game was tied at three, knocked in a couple. Tigers win. Tigers win 5-3. First pitch tonight, 7-10 p.m. at Comerica Park. Daniel Norris on the mound. Also Tuesday, Joey Chestnut remains the hot dog king. He defended his... Uh, Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest Championship, his 10th career title. He came in uh, on a chariot and then earned the mustard belt for another year, putting back 72 hot dogs in 10 minutes, breaking his previous record, I think was set last year at 70. ESPN's uh, science special guys, they do a whole thing on how he is able to do that with his esophagus, his jaw, and his stomach. Fascinating. Wow, 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 wow. 
Wow, that's like way more information than we needed to know, but good for him. Would you do it? No. <laughs> all right, coming up next, next is 630, local stories from all over Metro Detroit. Plus, a Michigan man's effort to get rid of some pests completely backfires, or in this case, backflyers. What he did that sent his home into flames, they solved the problem. But first, a big, fat, hairy intruder. Well, we've got a, a sneak peek for you here. It's coming up next. It's today's top video, everybody. Navigate your... All right, everybody, welcome back. It's time for today's <laughs> top video. Oh boy, oh boy. A bear in Colorado entered this home and stayed around for a little while, making himself comfortable. Colorado Park wildlife officials say the 375 pound bear let himself into this home on Monday night. And you can see this spent a, quite a bit of time in the kitchen, opening the refrigerator, <laughs> going through the drawers and the cabinet doors. Was he looking for porridge? I don't know, <laughs> but in all, the homeowner says that the bear made himself at home for about five hours before leaving. This is unreal. At this point, I would put my home up on the auction block or put it on the market so that somebody can take over. I'm out. We're back in a minute, everybody. Wednesday. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6.30 starts now. A terror suspect due in court. The man accused of stabbing a police officer at Flint's airport will learn if he'll head to trial. Plus, to the rescue, Good Samaritans rush in after a tractor trailer tips over on a highway. Wonderful looking Wednesday out there. It's the only place you can stare at the sun safely right here at Local 4 News today. Wait until you see the numbers. I've got them. Okay, so we were all waiting for our 630 telestration with Brandon. Uh, unfortunately, it did not happen this morning and you should see the scrambling that IT Ron is doing over here in the corner to Trying make sure to that it. all that gets together. We're going to check in with Brandon for our telestration picture of the day in just a little bit. But in the meantime, might as well get caught up on the forecast, right? That's right. Hey, Brandon, are you going to tell us in uh, six weeks where to get those special shades so you can see the eclipse? Yeah, we are going to. We've got a, uh, a solar eclipse coming uh, in August. That's going to be awesome. Uh, Paul Gross is your guy. He's got some of the glasses already and he's got a uh, map that shows where the like 100% eclipse is. Millions and millions of us are within a short car ride of that track. Okay, we'll get more into that. Paul's already working the science of it. You know it. Beautiful shot here from our Penobscot camera downtown. 61 degrees, a few 50s out there in some of your suburbs. It's Rhonda Walker's golf day, so even though she's not here, we've got her golf forecast and yours as well. Tons of sun. Grab the sunscreen as you head out. Make sure you don't forget the water hydrated today, but the humidity is not going to be real high. It's a comfortable 80 at lunch, 85 the afternoon high temperature. East winds 5 to 10, so everything is shaping up nice with light breezes and low humidity. It is a good looking hair cast for today. There's a look at the picture, guys. We are not seeing much on satellite and radar. And uh, how long does that last? We'll take a look at our next shower chances coming up. Your four zone weather is on the weather tab of clickondetroit.com. Jason, how are we looking on the drive? Well, we've got a closure of Ford Road in Westland between Carlson and Wayne. You'll want to use Cher a Warren or Cherry Hill as an alternate. I believe we have chopper of that scene as well. That is why the road is closed right there, uh, blocked off uh, as police investigate what's going on there. Now to our big story this morning, terror suspect Amora Fatui due in court. Yeah, he's accused of stabbing a police officer at Flint's International Airport. And today, the two might come face to get face once again. Local force Kim DiGiulio live with more on what's happening inside of court today. Kim? That's right. Good morning, guys. Well, what's going to happen is evidence is going to be laid out in court today against Amor Fatui, and a judge will decide if it's enough evidence to go to trial. So that's what's happening with him today. As for that airport officer, he is recovering and even made a special appearance yesterday. It was June 21st when airport officer Lieutenant Jeff Neville was stabbed with a 12 inch knife while on the job. He was released from the hospital days later. Yesterday was a breakthrough day for Neville as he appeared in Fenton's 4th of July parade. 
Lieutenant Neville rode along a float for the group concern over police safety. Many onlookers cheered and clapped as he went by, happy he's okay. Lieutenant Neville says he's more than lucky to be doing well. People say you're lucky. I said, no, I'm blessed. It's a lot more than luck when things come together the way they did that day. Lieutenant Neville is healing well and hopes to be back to work soon. Certainly great that he has a good mindset on all of this after what happened to him and that he is recovering. So we're certainly happy to hear about that. As for Amor Fatui, he could end up facing up to 20 years behind bars. We are live this morning. I'm Kim DeGiulio, Local 4. Back wow. to you. Well, we continue to wish him uh, continued recovery. So thank you, Kim. Thanks, Kim. Mm -hmm. We are following stories all across Metro Detroit this morning. Yeah, stories from Shelby Township, Celine, and Dearborn. And that's where we're expecting to learn more information about an incident involving a Michigan State Police cruiser. You're looking at a video of the cruiser on the back of a tow truck near the intersection of Wyoming and Mercier. It's unclear what caused the damage to the squad car, but we do have calls into Michigan State Police. We'll bring you any new information as soon as we have it. A man accused of driving drunk and killing a 19 year old over the weekend has been arraigned. Matthew Stoy was charged in Saline on Tuesday with driving while intoxicated. He was given a $50,000 bond. Uh, this is not his first drunk driving incident. He has a previous conviction in New York. And contrary to the rumors, the Packard proving grounds are just fine. The rumor started after a small brush fire broke out after the Shelby Township fireworks on Monday. The fire started in a hot zone, which is an area where firework debris falls and could catch on fire. Firefighters were prepared. They were ready to put that blaze out that started. Twitter has become too much for singer Ed Sheeran. His reason for quitting the social media site that has Lady Gaga coming to his defense. Plus, Dr. Frank McGeorge is in. Fidget spinners may be driving you crazy, but fidgeting isn't all bad. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge coming up, the hidden benefits of fidgeting for all ages. But first, a deadly act of revenge. Why investigators believe a man crashed his car full of propane into an apartment building. The story and the video behind it, next. Sky 14.